Jamie Chadwell and the Coastal Carolina football team are having a lot of success in Conway. I talk one-on-one -on -one with the football coach for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Coach Jamie Chadwell, welcome to Quentin's Close-Ups. Hey, I'm excited to be on here. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Obviously, you are the head winning football coach at Coastal Carolina. <laughs> well, we're, we're we're having a lot of success right now. It's been a uh, it's been a fun year, and and uh, our our players are well deserving. They 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 put a lot of hard work in to to accomplish a goal, and and they're uh, they're heading that direction right now. What direction are you heading in as coach? Well, we're trying to we're trying to build a program here, Quentin, that we can. Uh, be long-term success. That's our goal. Anytime you, anytime you're fortunate to coach a program, you want to leave it better than you found it, and you want to build something that's lasting. And that's what we're trying to do now. And this is, hopefully, this is this the bottom floor of what we're trying to accomplish. And how did you find a program when you became coach? Well, um, you know, I was here as an assistant, and I was fortunate enough to be able to take over, and and I was left a, a really good program with a good foundation. So you just had to continue to build the groundwork that was already there. Uh, you try to implement things that uh, that you like. Your own personality, as you know, you can't do it anybody else's way. You got to do it your own way, and so trying to do that, and and, uh, and just blessed to be around some a good staff, yes. and also just some kids that were hungry, hungry yes. to win, and uh, that's fun. It absolutely, really is. And what are those things that you're implementing right now, Coach? Well, the main thing that we're trying to do here is just be to be <clears throat> have a purpose. And be accountable to each other, and and we talk a lot about that. If you're accountable to your teammate, uh, that means you'll sacrifice. That means you'll do things because you love them. When you love somebody, you sacrifice. You're accountable for what you do. We've been pushing hard, being accountable to each other, and I, and I think our players have run with that, and they're they're being accountable for what they need to do every day, and and I think that's showing up as we're playing. And what sacrifices have your players been had to make to order in order to become successful? Well, there's a lot, obviously, from a student athlete standpoint. You know, they're uh, if you want to go through a day of life of them, you know, they're they're over here early. Uh, they're in meetings about an hour and a half. They're weightlifting an hour. They're at practice for two hours. They're in study halls for another hour and a half, uh, and that's not counting the class time that they're in. And then right. then you throw in this uh, COVID uh, and all the different things that you have to do there just to try to be able to play. There's a lot of sacrifices they're making daily. And realistically, uh, you know, they're making sacrifices uh, that, uh, you know, college students typically don't, you know, don't, you know, and everybody's having to change their habits. And so it's, uh, they've done that though. And that's what I think I've been more pleased with. And what habits have you been able to change as coach during this whole coronavirus outbreak? Well, you, uh, you definitely have to make sure you got that mask on with you 24 seven. You know, I think that's the, I think you get that you, you used to it now. You, when you get, you get out of the car, Hey, where's my mask? You know, when you're going or going into the grocery store, where's my mask? Hey, I better wash my hands. I hadn't washed them the last five minutes, you know? So you got to, those things that maybe you don't think of as much, you got to do those things. And, and so, um, you know, you try to create a uh, habits that will keep you from one, uh, possibly getting the virus, but really keep you from keeping you from set or set a good example. Do have it so set a good, good example for people that are that are around you. And from my understanding, I I think you are a fan of neck gaiters, are you? You know what? We do have those. I do wear, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we wear those at every practice. Uh, and uh, I've, I also have a regular mask as well. I go back and forth from it. Practice, I wear a, I wear the neck, and then the, at other times I wear uh, the basic one. Yeah, same here with the neck gators. I love the neck gators. Yeah, so there, there's mine right there that I wear right there. Oh, great. That's amazing. And let me ask you this too, Coach. You talk about COVID obviously changing things. What team that you was you were actually hoping to play that you couldn't play this year because of COVID? Well, you know, we were open with, with South Carolina, and so that's obviously a big one here in the state and one that I know our, our players were looking forward to. So that's one I wish we would have been able to play uh, just because of being in state and having an opportunity to play against an SEC school. Um, that would have been awesome for our for our football team. Uh, you talk about USC. There's still those rumors out there that you might become the next head coach. What are you focused yeah, on right now? Know, those, those those rumors are all rumors. Obviously, <laughs> uh, it's always great uh, and humble to be mentioned. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm sure they've got somebody in mind that they think can be their next head football coach. And we're so focused here on trying to get uh, uh, you know what we need to do. So you know you don't focus on you don't focus on rumors, obviously. Uh, and uh, but it's 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 obviously very flattering to have your name mentioned for a prestigious job like that. 
Yes, indeed. And what do you focus on next, Coach? Well, we still got uh, we still got four games to go here um, that uh, we have an opportunity to play. So you know we're going to go out and try to be our absolute best each week, and hopefully go four and zero. That's our goal to try to be undefeated here. And uh, and we've got a lot of challenges in front of us, but you try not to look too far ahead. You can't look behind. You just try to stay in the moment. And I think uh, as a coach, that's your job to try to keep your guys focused on the uh, on the moment and what's important now. And winning is what's important now. Is trying to be your very best. And you talked about in the moment. Let's talk about this. ESPN has announced that it's popular college game day is coming up the road to Conway. Where are you emotionally with that? You know what? That's exciting. Uh, if you follow college football at all, you know what game day is. You know what uh, how awesome that is. And him and Corso, Mr. Corso, picking you know the uh, the winning team and putting the headgear on. So for us to have the opportunity to host that. Uh, that's a pretty special deal, and uh, we're, we're pretty excited about that. I know our university and our whole community is. Absolutely. And, you know, five years ago, Coastal Carolina actually lost at your old stomping grounds, Charleston Southern, where you coach. And as it, it was actually number one in the FCS, number two in another poll. Now you all are on college game day. Where does your mind go to when you think back to that? Well, uh, I had a lot of great memories from my time there at CSU. A lot of good people, uh, unbelievable young people on the football team, and, and we're able to do some good things there. So great memories from that. I, we did have a lot of great battles versus Coastal during that time frame, some really good games, uh, and uh, uh, it was good rivalry. So it was fun to be a part of, and, and we as, you know, we were fortunate to win some of those. And, um, and uh, you look back on that time fondly for sure. Yes, indeed. And let's rewind time to last week because Coastal obviously won against Texas State 49-14. Your team improved to 9-0 and have obviously clinched the spot for the Sun Belt Championship game, which we will face UC uh, Lafayette at Brooks Stadium on the 19th. How did your players improve during that particular game? Well, um, you know, that's a big one. And uh, we, we've played them earlier in the year and we're fortunate enough to beat them. But now, you know, it's a championship game. And, uh, you know, nobody's going to hold anything back. So I know our team's excited about that opportunity, especially so we get to host that game. You know, we get to host it. You get to host a championship game. How cool is that? Uh, hosting game day and then get to host a championship game. So that's pretty awesome and uh, something that I, I, our guys have worked extremely hard for. And it's going to be uh, – hopefully it'll be a great day to be a shine clear that day because we can come out and get a win. Absolutely. And you talked earlier about those four games that you have left. What exactly are those challenges? Well – we got a huge one this week versus a, a team that's ranked, you know, and then, then you got one more conference game left and then you have the championship game and then you have the bowl game. So all, every one of them have a lot of meaning to, them. you know, there's a, there's a, a lot of opportunities out there. And so, and now that, you know, we're hosting game day and we, we've got a target on our back now. And so, you know, now everybody's coming to get our best. So it's going to be a big challenge. And you obviously talk about those challenges and you talk about the players that are going to obviously overcome those challenges. Let's talk about Taryn Jackson, CJ Brewer, and of course, Grayson McCall. When I say those free, to work, free guys' names, what comes to your mind? Well, uh, great people uh, and really good football players that are team people. They love their team. They'll sacrifice to make their team uh, good. Obviously, the Tehran and CJ, great defensive players, our leaders, 50 year seniors. Been here a long time, went, been through a lot of downs, and now they're, you know, enjoying the up. And then, you know, Grayson McCall, a redshirt freshman who's just trying to figure it out week to week and is playing at extremely high level and uh, and is taking the stride. So a guy that's got a chance to be a really special player before he leaves here. Yes, indeed. And all of them have ranked in so many great polls. And, you know, many people say that the CFP, at the CFP poll, that is, will matter moving forward. But your football team is up three spots at 14 in the recent Amway Coaches Poll. You told ESPN Sports Center that you don't allow people from the outside to judge who you are. But what should people from the outside look at when it comes to this impressive poll, when it comes to Coaches Poll? Well, you know, I think we're I think we're gaining respect each week. I think we're learning. I think our our, our teams, uh, not teams, coaches, other people are learning more about us as we play each week, and and that's given us an opportunity to hopefully continue to uh, win and then and gain more and more respect. You know, and uh, we're on an unbelievable run right now, and it's not going to happen every year. But you know, this year we've hit it just right, and so uh, I, I hope that we have an opportunity to uh, continue to earn that respect each week. Yes, sir. And you also told ESPN that your players never practiced nor prepared, I believe, to be a last place team. How did you all actually prepare? Well, just the I think it's more than anything. It's just your mental belief, your mindset. You know, you, you are who you believe you are. Uh, and we, we talk to our team all the time. You got to act like a champion before you get a champion. It starts in the mind. And so everything we did, we wanted to have like a championship type behavior and what we ate. 
uh, what we did, how we worked, things that were important to us. And, and you, you try to get young people to buy into that. And you got to buy into something they don't see. Uh, but if you can get them to buy into something they don't see and understand it's out there, uh, and then it starts becoming more of a reality, then they start really believing, hey, this is how this is how we can do it. And then it you know takes off like wildfire. Yes, sir. And if I, this might be a silly question, but if there was a playoff between any other undefeated team right now, who would you take on? Uh, I would take on anybody that wants to take us on. I feel I feel that good about our team, and and we'll go out and uh, play anybody that uh, wants to play us, and uh, we look forward to it. Except maybe Alabama. How about right. that? They're right. undefeated. Right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> That's so amazing. Well, Coach Jamie Chadwell of Coastal Carolina, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to Quentin's Close-Ups. I appreciate you, Quentin, very much. God bless you. Likewise.